Last month, I talked about three big map mistakes we made while mapping the world. Basically, landmass essences that we thought were in one place, only to be either in another place or even completely non-existent. While these, however, might have come to our collective consciousness by mistakes or bad assumptions we made, we also have legendary tales of lost cities far away in the mountains, or far beneath the waves, or somewhere else that's hard for us to access. Leaving you to wonder how people could have built an entire city there in the first place, but still. So let's take a look at three of these lost ancient cities that never actually existed. Except we're not going to be looking at Atlantis or El Dorado, but rather some more obscure stories. Made possible with the support of Skillshare. Oh, by the way, did you know that according to YouTube, about 674% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed? Oh, you don't actually care? Okay, cool. Perhaps the grandfather of all mythical lost cities would be Atlantis, a civilization written up by Plato said to have sunken beneath the waves of the Atlantic as punishment from the gods. But did you know there are also other Atlantises out there? Under the Baltic Sea, just off the German-Polish coast, lies the mythical city of Vineta. Vineta, sometimes spelled with a W, is said to have been a bustling center of commerce, open for business to all, and where different cultures from everywhere from Scandinavia to Greece live together in harmony. Some accounts, however, describe Vineta as a place of sin, its wealthy inhabitants giving it to waste and arrogance, for which they would be destroyed by a flood in around the year 1000 AD while others say it was besieged and destroyed by Danish forces. Vineta's precise location isn't exactly known, but it is said to have been located somewhere around these areas, either off the islands of Ozidom and Volin, or by the nearby town of Bats. A record of the city has been recorded from numerous sources, including Sephardi Spanish traveler Ibrahim ben Yacoub, and detailed accounts from Adam of Bremen. Adam of Bremen, in particular, wrote about an emporium in the Oda River estuary, home to Slavs, Barbarians, and Greeks, and frequented by Saxon traders, and which briefly held refuge for Harold Bluetooth. No, actually, that's not a coincidence. The existence of Vineta, however, remains doubtful, and likely a form of local folktale. Nonetheless, there are numerous different landmarks around the region named after Vineta, from German navy ships to Berlin's Vinetaplatz and Vinetastrasse U-Bahn station, the latter located on the UT between Pankow and Schönhausali, and even a Vineta neighborhood in Svakamund, Namibia. Although personally, I wouldn't really recommend naming ships and submarines after a legendary city that sank. Vineta isn't even the only mythical sunken city just off the coast of Europe either, as there also exists an old Breton tale of the city of Ease, or Ker Ease. Built by the semi-mythical King Gradlon at the request of his ocean-loving daughter Doudes, Ease was built with dikes all around it to protect itself during high tide, when all the city's surroundings would be completely submerged underwater. The gate, however, would be open for arriving ships during low tide, with a special key held by the king himself. Dode, however, was often described, despite her father's piety, as frivolous or mischievous, some even saying she was a sorceress because why not, and would often steal the keys from her father to let her lover into the city, either for a banquet or after being persuaded to do so. Look, the story differs a lot between authors. Either by mistake or under the influence of alcohol, Dodes opened the gates of the dikes, inundating the city. The king is said to have been saved by a saint, and had tried to save his daughter until a voice called out, Throw the demon thou carriest into the sea, if thou dost not desire to perish. Dode was thrown into the water, either deliberately by her father, or just by falling off the horse, fading into folktale as a water spirit who continues to haunt the waters to this day. While there aren't any claims that Ease was ever real, the story differs a lot depending on who's telling it. In some versions, the saint in question was Saint Wimelo, while in others it was Saint Corentin. Some versions say Dote fell into the water, while others say King Redlund threw her off the horse. And while some versions of the story say Dote stole the keys from her father as he was asleep, some even say it was Dote herself who kept the keys to the gates of the dikes. Some versions add that one day, Ease will return, when Paris is swallowed up, as the Breton par Ease roughly means like Ease, or similar to Ease. So yeah, maybe Paris might be destroyed in the future, but at least we got to learn a bit about a language by dissecting a pun. Finally, in ancient Greek legend, the port city of Tartessus lie beyond the Pillars of Hercules, or what we now call the Strait of Gibraltar. Okay, so this place isn't exactly quite as mythical as the other two, but it's still really interesting. 
Tartessus was recorded in ancient Greek and Roman literature throughout the first millennium BC as being a port city at the mouth of the Guadalquivir River in Andalusia, and home to a more widespread culture called the Tartessians. Tartessus was used in ancient accounts as the name both for the Guadalquivir River and an older name for the later city of Carpia. They say that Tartessus is a river in the land of the Iberians, running down into the sea by two mouths, and that between these two mouths lies a city of the same name. The river, which is the largest in Iberia, and titled those of a later day called Betis, and there are some who think that Tartessus was the ancient name of Carpia, a city of the Iberians. According to the historian Aphorus of Chimae in the 4th century BC, the Tartessians were rich in metals including gold, copper, and importantly for the Bronze Age, tin. Thus, Tartessus became a lucrative trading port for the region, exporting metals from the Celtic lands further into Iberia to the rest of the Mediterranean world. Tartessus likely fell in around the 6th century BC, likely built over by the later city of Carpia, but not without leaving behind 97 inscriptions in their language, a language whose script has kind of been deciphered, but which also hasn't been classified to any language family. It doesn't resemble any Celtic language or indeed any Indo-European language at all, likely being a language isolate of sorts. Eh, who am I kidding, someone's probably trying to pair it with Basque. Although the city has long faded into ancient history, a Phoenician colony established nearby to trade with Tartessus would last into the modern day. Founded in 1104 BC as Agadir, with the Romans changing its name to Gadis, then the Arabs to Cadiz, and then the Spanish to its modern name, Cadiz. While these cities might have never actually existed, that doesn't mean there aren't actual sunken cities around the world, or even just abandoned ones. We can learn a lot about our history through studying these ancient ruins, as well as historic buildings and structures still in use. Therefore, preserving them is of utmost importance. Today, many of these sites have been inscribed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. But what actually is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and what does it mean to be one? Follow me over to my channel, Articulation, where I just made a video about this to find out more. You heard the lady, go to her video. Well, just after this funny skill charade I have to show you first. Hi, I would like one skill, please. Certainly, what would you like? Well, um, I didn't think I would make it this far. You didn't? Okay, well, you know what, if you're not sure, that's perfectly fine. How about I just give you all the skills? All the skills? But how? Simple, with a subscription to Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare is an online learning community made by and for people looking to get better at whatever creative skills they've always wanted to master, whether that be drawing pictures, or cooking a delicious meal, or speaking a foreign language, or whatever. For you, I'd perhaps recommend this course by Ali Abdal on productivity for creators. Also, you can download all the courses you'll want to watch later when there's no internet, like when we're allowed to travel again, or whenever it snows in the Portland area. Wow, that sounds awesome! But that also sounds pretty expensive if you're giving me everything in the store. Well, no, I mean, it's not like it's actually taking any inventory off ourselves. In fact, the store doesn't even exist. We're just imaginary characters in the greater Kanubiverse whose sole purpose is to make more entertaining sponsor segments. But what certainly isn't imaginary is the link at the top of the description where you can get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, but only if you're one of the first 1,000 people to do so. So, like, do it. <laughs>